Salutare tuturor, mă numesc Andrei Baciu și bine ați venit la podcastul de vorbă, un podcast despre Dumnezeu, discuții pe teme diverse și mărturii alături de oameni faini și dragi inimii mele. Astăzi vom vorbi cu un om special și vom aborda un subiect foarte frumos legat de oastea Domnului, legat de aducerea Biblilor în România în momentul în care era interzis lucrul acesta, dar acest interviu sau această discuție va fi în engleză. Așa că uh, vă invit să ascultați cu drag și să nu uitați că vor fi subtitrările jos. Brother Sven, may God bless you and it's an honor and privilege to have you here. Thank you. How are you? Very well, very well. It's um, wonderful to be back in Romania. So you said at church yesterday when we met for the first time, you said that although you were born in Sweden, Your home country is Romania. <laughs> In many ways it is, uh, and ministry-wise it is the country that I have, together with my precious wife, have been traveling my, most to. So it's the country that I visited the most in, in uh, Europe and the world. So for how many years have you, have you been traveling here to Romania? Uh, first time was before I was married, 1979, and then we ca- we have continued till today. Wow. And uh, before revolution, it was many times every years, and uh, after revolution, it continued. But the last uh, years, it's been uh, a bit more seldom. My son was here, and uh, he he worked with the poor people. Mm. Interesting. What's really uh, funny is that I was not even born when you came to Romania for the first time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's an uh, honor and privilege to speak with you about um, some very important subjects. Mm-hmm. But the first question I have for you, which is uh, important, is this one. What is your real name? Because the people here um, call you by this name, Fratele Sven. Fratele Sven. Svensson, that's true. That is a common name in Sweden. Many people have this name. But uh, we choose this together with our co-workers and people that we worked with because the secret police uh, would have very big problems in finding Sven Svensson, who he is. And uh, You know, the secret police was was really at work at that time. Many of our friends had files uh, and they kept... And one time we were in America and we spoke at a Romanian church and uh, we showed slides and pictures about Oastea Domno Lui. And uh, later, one or two years before the revolution, uh, Vasilya Suchu was meant to be taken in by the secret police. And uh, he, he was taken in and they asked him, you know, who, who in America is showing pictures and taking Bibles here and who is this man? Oh, I don't know. And the secret police insisted. Oh, I think you know because you were on the picture. Mm. And uh, ah, maybe Fratele Sven. So I, we, 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 we used this name, so we had this name so that no one would, would uh, discover your identity. Discover that and that he would not get in trouble either because the people that, uh, that took Bibles received the Bibles from us. So my, my question regarding this, so you were in Romania in the communist times, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. before so the revolution. I have this um, blessing to not be born in that area. But whenever I'm talking with people that would, were born in communist times and they were Christians, they said it was very tough. You know, if you heard of Richard Wurmbrand, for example. Very tough. When I read his books and when I look at pictures with his body, the way he, the, the cruelty that was there, the way he was beaten and, and also his love for Christ, he said at some point that um, they tortured us as animals. Now I have a question regarding this. When you brought a Bible to Romania, if they caught you, what would they do to you? 
they never caught us in Romania. In other countries, I, I have been caught, but I was never caught in Romania. But I was put in prison in Skopje, uh, previous Yugoslavia. We were put, uh, we were giving gospels out. But in Romania, God protected us even more. Wow. And uh, now the believers sometimes that received the Bibles, if they were found out, because we came in with, with many Bibles, and there were there were people, you know, Astea Domna Lui, that were on their knees praying and wanting to have Bibles. So uh, when we came to them, they, they wanted as many as possible. How many Bibles did you, did you bring with, with you? Thousands, but every time maybe 2,000 Bibles, between 1,000 and 2,000 for every trip. So thousands of Bibles we have brought. And you know, sometimes when, and at the border they always asked, do you have pornografia? Mm -hmm. Do you have weapons? Do you have Bibles? So wow. these was the three most dangerous words, things they were looking for. And, um, and yeah. About these Bibles now, yes. because I'm very curious and interested in, in this topic. How did you hide the Bibles? Sometimes our children slept on them and we prayed them through. <laughs> it's very, we have three children and two of them came many, many times with us. But we also concealed, we, we did conceal them and hide them in the, in the cars in different places. So I'm asking you these questions, uh, Brother Sven, because right now we'll, we, we, we live in a time in Romania where uh, when we have Bibles like this one, I have a Bible on my app. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have several apps. I have the Bible in Greek. I have it in English. I have it in German. I have it in Romanian. I have multiple um, options in Romanian. I have the audio Bible. I have cartoons about the Bible, mm. but we have to understand that in that era, in that period of time, people were praying, they, they were on their knees so they could have one Bible, right? Exactly. But my question is, did they, did they get one Bible or they had some pages from the Bible or some chapters? Before they had, bef bef in the beginning, of course, they would have one page and they would give to other people this page. When they have read it and studied and memorized, then they would give it on. But as, as uh, time went, they got more and more. So many of the people that never had a Bible, they became Bible distributors. Wow. So we would come there and they would take them and they would be happy. And, they, and of course, when we first came, uh, we worked with, with uh, we didn't work with the Lord's Army, the Oastea mm -hmm. Domna but we worked with other churches and we came to the house and we saw one car from other country, or other car, three cars, four cars from the West. Mm -hmm. And then we came. And I felt, Pavi and I, when we saw that, we felt we are really putting this woman in danger with so many Bibles and so many people. And we had heard about uh, the Lord's Army. This is back in 19, 1980, 81. And uh, we, we uh, started to pray that we would make a bigger difference because there were many people that came to the people with Bibles. And uh, we were in Constanza and uh, there we met a man and he knew about the Lord's army. In, in many ways, the Holy Spirit guided us to these people. Oh. And uh, then they gave us uh, Vasilya Sucho here in Cluth, his name, and we knocked at his door on an apartment. And he, he was a little suspicious. What is this? Is this Securitate or what? But he invited us, and then he called Nutsi, his uh, Nutsi Sucho, and she came and she translated because he could not speak English at that time. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning for us to work with uh, the Oastea Domna Lui. My question is, Brother Sven, weren't you afraid of getting caught and thrown in prison? 
because only someone who is crazy or mad about Jesus would do this kind of thing. I mean, you were married, you had children, you said you had three children at that time. Okay, so I have children right now, right? I have my daughter, my beautiful daughter, and you met her at church. I have Chris, my younger boy, and I cannot picture myself being, um, being away from my family, let alone be in prison and leave my children mm -hmm. with my wife. So my question is, weren't you afraid of what was going to happen to you? Um, good question. I don't, I don't think we were afraid. Uh, we had two children at that time and we were praying and we had peace and we, we uh, were not afraid because God was with us. And, and uh, during my time in prison in, in uh, Yugoslavia, I would not want to change it for anything because in Why? 40 days I learned so many things and I was able to share my faith with the prisoners. So you said, you said and, for 40 days? Yeah. Okay. But I would not want to do it again either. <laughs> so it's not, but uh, we were not afraid. Uh, and in Romania at that time, people that, res that brought the Bibles were not actually put in prison. They were only taken the car and sent back and persona non grata. Hmm. Another question, why would you try to bring Bibles in Romania? Why did you have this desire? You could have sit very well in Sweden, a very nice country, a very prosperous country. Why uh, or how did the Lord put this task on your, uh, on your heart? Go to Romania and bring Bibles to the, Romanian, to the a, Romanian people. It is a very long story. Please. But the Bible. Let's show it to the camera. Told me, you know, the Bible told us to go to everywhere with the gospel. So this and is we the believe that the Bible is the Word of God mm -hmm. and people who don't have the Bible, they should at least have one copy. Amen. So that they could hear what Jesus has to say. And Jesus, you know, is the way, the truth and, and the, the life. life. And uh, this is why we wanted to give people the Word of God. How did you understand that Romanians don't have Bibles? Um, how I understand it? I, I saw it because when we visited people, Christians, we saw that they, uh, some of them didn't have and, and they wanted and they were actually asking for it too. And then we read about it and we were with, uh, with an organization that, that uh, prayed for, for God's guidance and, and also for Romania and uh, knew that there were no, that they really wanted or needed the Bible. Hmm. Um, regarding the ministry side, I have another question which I believe is um, also very important. How important was the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And how important is the Holy Spirit in ministry? Because when we're talking, and let me explain why I'm asking this question, this is not just handing out a book. This is, let's look at a context. You were in communist times. Your life was threatened. You needed guidance where to go, at what time to bring that Bible, how to pray, uh, how did you get directions from the Holy Spirit and all that. So again, the question, how important was the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this? Mm, that is a long question and a long answer too. But uh, I come from a small Pentecostal church and uh, together with Pavy, we are part of this church. And uh, they actually came also to Romania, maybe 15 people from there. And, um, but now the question was about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I believe that when we uh, come to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to us. We cannot, we receive the Holy Spirit then. Yes. And then uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit it's important. We are to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and we are to be filled in, in the, by the Holy Spirit again and again. So it was important, the Holy Spirit is important 
And we have seen the working out of the Holy Spirit as he has guided us to many different people. Hmm. Did you have any, any supernatural events that took place in your ministry? Because I, I guess that there must have been some. There must have been some. Every trip was different, but there were many different uh, miracles. And one was when we came to the border and uh, they gave us a hard check and they, they came with a drill to drill into the car and they drilled into really? the light in the back. And I said, this is not my car. Why? Why? No, yeah, I can, you cannot do this. And uh, then they pulled out and there was some things, insulation, they, it was something that come out. And then I had a little fear and my wife encouraged me because I thought now they will find out, but they did not. And uh, uh, they maybe thought it was insulation and uh, they, because I was very upset that they destroyed my, the, the light and they put it back. So God answered our prayers, but very did, specific. Did you have Bibles in that? Yeah. So, yeah. so you... they had, they, it was Bibles they, they drilled into. And uh, then we traveled on on this journey and we praised the Lord and th thanked him. And then suddenly the car didn't move. And, um, you know, you were, you were driving, but it didn't go anywhere. So we stayed in a parking lot and um, we didn't know what it was. So we called some friends that were back in the city in the West. And they uh, told us that we, we, we had a code language where we talked and they understood everything. And they came and they, we put the Bibles in their car and we went and delivered them. And then they found uh, the, the fault, the sh shaft, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, had broken. Oh. And when we came back, they were carrying this and uh, said, Sven, we don't know what to do. So we went into the forest and we prayed together. And when we came out of the forest, we met this old man. My wife think it could have been an angel. I think it was an old man because he spoke, he, he spoke Romanian and he spoke a little English and said, uh, I help, I can help you. Mm -hmm. And then he brought us all the way through the village to a place uh, and, and I can't believe that in the middle of the forest was uh, a place where they could fix a thing like that. Wow. You know, they drilled a hole in the axle, the axle was broken. They drilled a hole there and they drilled a hole in a small piece there and they put in there and there and they put it together and they had modern uh, equipment to make it nice. And two hours it took, and the communists had helped us to fix God's car. So we went back. And that was a real miracle too for me, for us. God answers specific prayer. He, asked, he answers all prayer. So we, we need to pray to him. What's, what's fascinating is that um, if I remember correctly from what other people told me about communist times, you didn't have cell phones, right? No, 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 no. So if this event occurred nowadays, if something like this would happen to our car, for example, exactly. I would just take the phone and say, hey, exactly. you know me, you're my friend, can you please help me out, right? But then when you didn't have any phones, you said, let's pray. Right. That's right. And after you prayed, the Lord brought this uh, brought this person to you. The, who brought us to the place to fix it. Yeah, amazing. It was a real, we'll never forget that. And the phone, before we phoned our friends, we had to go to the village and in the village there were no phones. It took an hour or two and we did find one phone in the whole of the village. So it was a different time. Wow. You told me at some point about your wife that she is um, a, a very good help 
in the ministry. She is a very good help in the ministry. And uh, as we worked with the Lord's Army, she would be very good to care for the poor. And together we did that. And together with the church up in Marginea, uh, Jonel Bodnarescu, who has been on this program, and he, he, he had also this vision to help people, to visit people, to give them the gospel, to invite them to church, but also to give them help and help to self-help too. Pavy and they, they started a bee farm because they had no food and through the little income, then they got food to eat. And, and she, she was very much involved. She, she, she went even with the gospel to Turbata. We went together to build, to uh, have a, a well. They didn't have water in the whole village and they had only dirt floor. Yes. yes. And, uh, and uh, there, and uh, she built a house and the water and the church in Marianea also helped and was involved in this. Wow, nice. Um, now, would you please give us a little bit of context about Vastia Domnului? For people who don't know um, about this, what, what is Vastia Domnului? Yeah, and we didn't know much, 1980, when we, when we started to pray. And we didn't know so much either. So, but then we, we read about them and we met the Lord's Army people. And they are a revival movement that loves the Lord Jesus. They met secretly in the homes they would come two by two uh, uh, for a long time, so no one would know that the meeting was there. And uh, they would preach the gospel. The meetings would be just like any other church meeting, would be with prayer, with worship, and with preaching, and with many poems, and women and girls were reading these incredible poems at Tryon Doors. You know, Tryon Doors, he has written over a thousand, you know, thousands of poems. And, so, uh, so this is a book by, uh, by him. Yes. They, um, we, Cântările Evangheliei, that's what we call them in, uh, in Romanian. Mm -hmm. And here they, um, here they actually put uh, his poems. They also have images. How, how old is this book? Mm -hmm. how, how old is it? The book? Yes. The book is, uh, is very old uh, in the sense of Triandors. Yes. But uh, this one was probably printed around around 1982 or, or uh, when, when uh, yeah, I don't exactly know. Uh, the, it's, the it's, date. It, this is a treasure. But we would bring that to the different, to the churches. And, and Oastea Domno Lui uh, went to the Orthodox in the morning and they, they so they have friends in the Orthodox Church, and then they invite them to come to their meetings. They always had the meetings in the afternoon, and they still do, because they want to give the gospel to the people. Mm. Jesus is the important person. Center, yeah. is, he is the important, he's the Son of God, and he, he invites people to come to himself and he saves us, he forgives us sin. And that was the most uh, important thing for the Lord's Army, for Oastea Domna Louis. So um, I heard a few stories about um, uh, the Lord's Army, Oastea Domna Louis. And one of the um, important aspects about it, uh, how, how would they evangelize? That was the question. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays we have so many conferences, we have so many um, ideas, how to do this, action plans and, and all that. And, and when I heard about some peoples that were part of that movement, they said it was very simple. You just read your Bible, you prayed, and you had only one task. When you would go to work, you had to talk to one person about what you read. There was nothing complicated about that. Exactly. And at some point you brought up uh, this idea that there were two people that were praying, right? Mm -hmm. And they would have to evangelize. Now, um, what were some of the outcomes or the results of, of this revival from Wasta Domnului? Many people came to Christ. Many people were saved. 
Uh, they just had a youth uh, m camp up in the mountains, and uh, I think a dozen people came to Christ. They were teenagers, but they, they made decision for Jesus. So they invite people to really be sure that they, that Jesus, that they invite Jesus in their lives. Mm. Now, another evangelist, before the revolution, they met legally in weddings. Mm. And for two, and they, thousands, they were thousands of people gathered together legally. And uh, they marched through the, the city or the town or the village and the bride in white dress and the bridegroom much nicer than me. And uh, then they uh, uh, got married. But during all this time, they preached the gospel. They read poems from Tryon Doors. They uh, sang hymns. They played uh, the, violin. the violin and many other instruments too. And uh, then they invited people to come to Christ. Many people were invited to these weddings that did not know Christ. And this was a very big thing in evangelization. And they invited people and they came, they cried, they prayed on their knees, you know. At the wedding party. And at the wedding party, they, when they have come forward, they, they would pray on their knees sometimes. And they would come forward and be led to Jesus and become Christians born again right there. Mm. Uh, and I think many people came to Christ this way through this evangelization too. But I liked your, your uh, uh, example too, very much. It's important. This is the important thing. Yes. If the Holy Spirit lives in us, what do we talk about? Mm. We talk about Jesus. It's, what's really fascinating, Brother Sven, is that when your heart is filled with the love of Christ, that's going to be the subject that you're going to talk about. People are going to call you crazy, right? People are going to say, well, he's mad, he's, he's whatever, but I don't care. If you love soccer, if you love football, if you love basketball, if you love movies, you're going to talk about them, right? It's if true. you love clothes, you're going to have the most expensive clothes, you're going to be in the shops. But if, if you have the love of Christ in your heart, you're going to talk about Jesus Christ. And this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we were talking about the Holy Spirit. What is His purpose? To proclaim Christ, to show Christ exactly. to people. Exactly. And this is very interesting. When, um, when I heard of people's testimonies that they, they didn't believe in Christ and yet at some point Christ changed their hearts. They started talking about other things that they weren't talking uh, about before. Exactly. They started talking about the forgiveness of sins. They started talking about heaven. They were uh, joyful. And, and this is what Christ did in my heart. And this is what Christ did in your heart. Mm -hmm. And um, I have now another question because you brought up this subject about Triandors. Yeah. Uh, did you work with him? I had the privilege to meet him okay. many times or several times. And of course, Trajan Doris is. Joseph Trifa was a priest yes, that yes. started Oastea Domna Louis. Yes. And he preached the gospel. And he is still uh, preaching the gospel through some of the Oastea Domna Louis followers. You know, they're sending his messages over the internet. And uh, so, so he was an Orthodox priest that started this movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, Triandors was also at the time of Joseph Trifa. And this was a man that loved uh, Jesus and loved the Lord, loved the Bible, obeyed the Bible, lived the, the message he preached. He lived it absolutely out full. And we had the privilege, Pave and I, to visit his home. And he lived in a simple home. Uh, he, he did not spend money, but he had bread, he had food, he had what he needed, and he had a bed, and he had a, you know. And, and uh, of course, he was on his knees a lot on that bed, praying. How much time did, did he pray per day? Because I've heard stories about him that 
uh, he would uh, he would sit at his uh, bedside for many hours. He could pray for many hours. Yes, I don't know exactly, but he could pray for many hours. Have you ever and prayed? And he prayed a lot, and we prayed together, of course. And uh, when we went there the first time in his home, we had our daughter with us. So this was back in 1983, maybe before the no after the revolution, of course. And uh, uh, he, uh, we asked him, we prayed together, and he took our little baby four months old, and, and he held her up to the Lord and prayed for her. And we were very touched, uh, my wife and I. And uh, we, so he, he, he lived out what he preached. He preached a lot about prayer and that God answers prayer and we need to pray for one another. One preacher came to his home like we did. Many people came and visited him in his simple home. And uh, one, one preacher came and, and he was young. He was on fire for the Lord and he had given his life to the Lord. But he came to Thranadors and they talked and they, they, and then a secret police came and they had the Bible up and they read together and they were gonna pray together. And then the secret police came and he hit uh, Thranadors so bad that blood came out, out from his, uh, head. And this preacher, he became very angry. He almost attacked the secret police. But Thrandor no, no, my friend, don't hit him. Don't hit him. We are to love. The Bible says we are to love our enemies. We are to love those that persecute us. And this incredible when he saw this uh, this preacher uh, that Thryandor did made an incredible impact on this man and he became a pastor and pastoring a church for many years and uh, uh, it was an incredible impact on him well, when, when you prayed with him with uh, brother Thryandor how was the atmosphere in the room? Warm and full of power. I have not been baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit, but, uh, and that will come later, but it was an amazing power when he prayed. Now he was humble. He was not making a big uh, noise, uh, but, but the most important thing was that he was, he, he was full of love and humility and uh, tears as you prayed. Because I'm asking you this because I heard some uh, sermons about, um, from um, Richard Wurmbrand. He has one of the most famous sermons on um, crazy love or the love of Christ uh, and joy, right? And when he preached these messages, you could see his face glowing. Mm -hmm. You could see his eyes. He knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, it's that kind of sermon that, that, that is, uh, is from the heart. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of experience and also the Bible lived. Exactly. Yeah, and um, one of the one of the common uh, traits or the common things that I see both in Brother Richard Wurbrand and in Thryandors is that they all always had this idea: um, love one another. Exactly. As I loved you. And and this is this is the thing we can do. This is what the Lord Jesus did, and this is and they did. They really did. And of course, he preached. Uh, not with a loud voice, but he preached with this humility. And, and in Sibiu, um, he went every year for, to one gathering and, and thousand people would gather at the funeral place of Joseph Trifa. And there he would preach. Other people would preach too, but, but he also pr preached there. Yeah, he, he, he preached the gospel and it every time he had a chance. Uh, have you ever asked him this question? What would be, uh, what would be your, um, uh, your pieces of advice 
regarding the prayer life. What piece of advice did he had did he have for you? I, I didn't ask these questions because I saw in his life it was to pray and it was pray earnestly and with humility and a long time. Now, in, in, it also says that we should pray in our closet, but he did that. We went and saw him in his prayer closet, and of course he prayed much and long time and prayed a lot. Because when I look at the, the life of the apostles, they never asked the Lord Jesus Christ, how did you perform miracles? They never asked him, uh, how did you cast out that demon? They never asked him, uh, how did you uh, made this? Uh, how did you make this miracle? But but all of them asked him, how do you pray? And if there's one thing that I see at uh, at the life of Christ is that that perfect life of prayer. And then when I look at revivals, you know, from the past, and I read about the life of preachers that God used. I, I, I look at the, the life of other people who had a strong impact in that revival. All of them had a secret life of prayer. Mm -hmm. That's, um, and I want to ask you, uh, Brother Sven, how important is prayer in your life? Prayer is half of the Christian life. It is, it is you can, it's like you breathe out and you, you pray. And then the Bible is the other one. And Tryon also is very strong on the Word of God. But when prayer and the Word, we need to fill ourselves with the Word of God. And Tryon doors, he brought, you know, he encouraged many people to bring many, many Bibles. And he spent 15 years in prison because of his faith. 15 years, and of course, this was before the revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he, people came with Bibles, and uh, one time after he was released, the last time, they came and um, to, to, to Dacia was full of Bibles. They had received Bibles from another car, and it was so loaded down. So when they drive through the city, the police stopped them and they hoped and prayed they would go on. But they, they saw why, why he has so heavy in the back. So then they said, can you open up here? So they had to open up and there were Bibles and Bibles full. And these people, they had children and were part of family. But when Triandor heard about this, he immediately s confessed and said, no, 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 these young, these men, they, they are not guilty. I am guilty. Wow. I encouraged uh, them. I, 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 please, they have done nothing wrong, but I, I, I have done. And uh, as he was in court and, and met with, with the court and the judge, mm -hmm. and the judge would ask him, haven't you spent enough time in prison? Really? Tryon, Doors, have you not spent enough time in prison? As long as, and, and of course Tryon Doors answered, as long as there are people who don't have a Bible in Romania, and people want Bibles, and people bring Bibles, I will encourage them to bring Bibles to us and give out as many Bibles as I can. And the judge became furious, and he immediately told him to, to stand up, and I received the sentence, and he received three more years in prison. Now, if he would have had to serve that whole time, he would have died in prison. But he was released after two years. Or, or was it? 15, yeah, after two years, because he spent 17 years in prison for his faith. So the, he was a man that loved prayer and obeyed the Word of God. Hmm. And is an incredible, I don't know, I don't think I have met any man quite like this man. And of course he had followers, but he was a disciple of Jesus, so it was 
and Jesus who had the followers. They were following Jesus because of him. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed when I'm, when I'm hearing these, these stories because I know they're real. They are real. And, um, you know, you're looking at uh, real life heroes and everybody wants to have their own hero nowadays. But when you look at the person that emulates the character of Jesus Christ, is living in holiness, is living in godliness, and he does exactly what Jesus did, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other cheek around. Yes. And I was very impressed by this example you brought up. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear about this. So he practically gave, gave, he practically gave his freedom for someone who was carrying Bibles so that, so that that person would be with, their, with his children and his wife. Yes. Big, big sacrifice and it, it almost ended in death, but people prayed for him. Oh, they, they wanted him out of that prison and he got out. Uh, uh, they, they, and I think it was because of the revolution, but I'm not 100% sure now uh, what year this was. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was, many people prayed him free. How was his life in prison? <sighs> How is life in prison? Very, very tough. You know, no food. N very little food, bread and a little soup mm -hmm. and no, uh, a little water, water, but uh, dirty, many people in one prison cell and very, very difficult. But of course, he shared the love of Christ with the prisoners. And people were converted. I... People were converted, definitely. I don't know how many, but definitely they were converted. And um, uh, I have two more questions for you because the time is, uh, is, is flying so fast. Um, you know, Leonard Ravenhill, a Christian author who, uh, he, he's one of my favorite authors. Ah. He said at some point in his life, and this is one of the quotes that I, I have deep down in my heart, are the things you are living for worth Christ dying for. So when he said this, he had this actually on his tombstone. And even his tombstone was actually a way to preach this message. My question to you, Brother Sven, is this one. Um, what is your, your biggest desire? What, what is your biggest wi wish when you leave um, this earth and you go to be with the Lord? When I am in with the Lord, yes, I will. After you pass away, after you, after, after you don't live anymore on this earth, mm -hmm. what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to leave before, behind? Before, before I, yes, that is a tough and good question because, uh, in many ways, I mean Ravenhill, he has some incredible quotes. Yes. And one of my uh, friends, George Verver, from uh, not Oastea Domna Louis, but OM. Have you heard his name? Operation Mobilization? No. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is a man that is now 85 years old, I think. And he has missionaries and mis in in an organization that he started and he is still going strong and he loves Ravenhill. That's why I remembered him. And uh, he is, he uh, is a missionary and a mission founder and, and uh, a challenger. And I had the privilege to work with him for, for one year, but we are going away from the question now. The question was, what I want to leave behind. Yes. And uh, I think that uh, I, the, the being here again and meeting the brothers and sisters in Cluj and being 10 days up in Marginea with a wonderful church, uh, they have really challenged me because 
I'm thinking sometimes I, I don't have so long left. Hmm. And we are already planning the next trip to Romania. Because in Sweden, in some ways, you, you, you know, everybody has heard the gospel. Every person in Sweden received a Bible this past last two months. So they are, and, and I want to give, I want to go somewhere else with the word of God uh, because we have heard, now we have many good stories because the church has prayed and we are told to evangelize where we are. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to uh, spend time more. I do uh, read the Bible every day. Mm -hmm. And this is a big challenge, you know, uh, to every day read the Bible. And, and in January the 8th, you read in Genesis and then you read in the Psalms and then you read in the New Testament, and then you also read a little bit in the Proverbs. And in one year, you read through the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this is my fourth year of doing this, and the Bible is still fresh. Mm -hmm. And my legacy, that will be, that's a very good question, but that I can obey and live the Word of wow. God. Wow, wow, very nice. And, and, there, and there is work to do. Very nice. And Brother Sven, one last question. And again, uh, before asking this final question, for me as someone who is young and restless, <laughs> uh, but had his life changed by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to look up to people who served their King, Jesus. I want to look up to people who were involved in the ministry and to see their example and then just learn from them as much as I can. And this is very, this is unique in Christianity. Although you're from Sweden and I'm from Romania, we serve the same king. And it's as if I've been, I've known you for my entire life. Why? Because we have this common love that we it's share, true. which is in, in, in Christ. So my final question for you would be, uh, Brother Sven, why did you choose Jesus Christ and not someone else? This is a very good question. And uh, I had the privilege of being brought up in a Christian home, but I did not, I went to, I didn't follow my mama and daddy. I did go to church and, 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 and for, but I went even away into India on the road and uh, uh, I went away on my own. But later when I came back, and when I met people, then I gave my life again to the Lord. I did uh, want to follow Him, and I followed Him fully. And that's interesting because uh, 1974 this happened, and I was only a young man. And there the Holy Spirit led me to join this organization, uh, we went with the gospel to Italy for the summer <laughs> and then for the year to the ship Logos, who is a ship with 140 people from different countries who takes the gospel from country to country. And uh, later, after when we came back, I worked with the founder, George Weber, and he really is a man that loves the word and distributes the scripture and distributes books, literature. And he's written several books. And uh, if anybody wants a book by him, write me and, and I will get you a book that will change your life. Now, the, Jesus is the one that changed your life. But uh, then later on, I went to uh, work in Eastern Europe from 1977. Uh, and has worked there ever since. Until now. Even though now I'm getting old and I, th I thought I am retired. But here I have in many ways been renewed in meeting you and meeting the brothers and sisters and meeting the churches. And, and uh, we will be back this summer. That's very nice. So next time when you come to Romania, please give me a call. From now on, I have your phone number and we'll be able to uh, keep in touch. 
And uh, I want to encourage you with a Bible verse yes. that I have for you and for your ministry. And this is from the Lord. Um, it's from uh, Zechariah. Not by might, nor by power, but through your Holy Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And I believe from, my, from the bottom of my heart, brothers, Ven, that we can't accomplish anything, anything apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can talk about Jesus all we want. We can talk about strategizing. We can talk about church. We can talk about the, the, the delivering books and Bibles. But if we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, we, we, we wouldn't be able to talk to people about Jesus. I pray that you will have wisdom in your ministry. I pray that you'll have health. I, I pray that you'll be healed and many, many other people will, would give their lives uh, to Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of, of talking with you. You know, we were to pray without ceasing. Yes. And yes. in many ways, what we have done right now, right now has been praying. Yes, yes. We, this is also prayer because we are sharing our hearts to God. And I, and I told you yesterday when, when we, we met at church, I said, pray for this podcast. If it's from God, you'll come here. And it, it was, v it, it, everything was so fast, exactly. not planned, flexible, and now we're here. But I expect you next time as well. And may God bless you, Brother Sven. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and God bless you. Thank you so much. Dragi ascultători, Domnul Iisus Hristos să vă binecuvinteze. Um, Asta sunt câteva povești adevărate de viață din vremea uh, comunismului. Și dacă vreau să spun următorul lucru, dacă astăzi aveți cartea asta și astăzi aveți o Biblie, nu o lăsați să pună praful pe ea. Pentru că sunt oameni care au plătit chiar cu prețul vieții lor. Sunt oameni care au stat în închisoare. Sunt oameni care au fost despărțiți de familiile lor. Ca noi să avem această Biblie. Dacă o avem. Citiți cuvântul lui Dumnezeu, memorați-l și spuneți și altora despre dragostea Domnului Isus Hristos. Vă aștept și data viitoare la un nou episod din De Vorbă Podcast. Până atunci, Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze!